I'm back. I've been away from videos, uh, I confess, for two months because I've been all over the UK and I've been building a new SharePoint farm. But I'm back and with a neat little trick I want to show you. Uh, well, I think it's neat, but then I don't get out much. Anyway, what is this neat little trick? So this lowdown video will show you how to use the fairly newish location column type and make a Bing map or Google map a hyperlink from it. Now, at the time of publishing, this column is only available in SharePoint Online, and my demo will also use Power Apps to make it work. There are other methods you can use to customize the hyperlink. I'm going to start with a new custom app, uh, what I'll call Customers. I'll create the location column, but again, you can create text columns instead for the street address and postal code or zip code. Um, that I'm going to be using. I will create a calculate column to manipulate the text and make it into a sort of a web address. I will then customize the form in Power Apps and make a new hyperlink option for it. So you could use any list for this demonstration. I'm going to use a custom list because it's cleaner and you will see all the columns that I'm going to add. I'm going to call this list customers. Okay, let's look at the new list app. There you can see it's nice and clean and I'm only going to add the columns I need for the demonstration. I'm going to add a location column. As I said earlier, you can use text columns for the address instead. But if you're new to the location type, let me demonstrate how it works. I'll call this one address. The idea is I can display any elements of an address that is recognized. I will gonna pick street address, city, and postal code or zip code. Click save. And there are all my new columns. So how does this location column work? If I enter a place of interest or address, I'm going to enter my training center location where I work, which is QA Birmingham, which is in the West Midlands in the in, you know, UK. This connects to the Bing map service, which looks for the locations based on the text I enter. It's found my work address, as you can see. So I'm going to click this location and it's pulled up the full address of the location I selected. Now this is all good, except I've often heard people complain about this new feature. You know, this is all great, but I can't turn it into a Google map or a Bing map. I can't bring up the location of it. It's, it's just pulling it in. Well, that, that's exactly what that service does. It just retrieves the data from Bing, but it's not designed to push anything out. Uh, and that's fine because now going to show you how we can create another column that will provide the web link, the hyperlink uh, from the information it's retrieved. So I will create a calculated column. Uh, the calculate column is not in the modern list yet. So I'm going to click more, which will take me to the classic create column page. And I'm going to call this one Bing URL. And I want this calculate column because I want to string together or concatenate together all the elements that are going to make the hyperlink address. I'll make this formula box bigger and start my formula with an equal sign. The syntax of SharePoint formulas is very similar to Excel formulas, uh, as if you'd see them in an Excel table object. I will do a Bing and a Google example, uh, starting with the Bing address. I will post both addresses uh, underneath the video so you can use that and copy and paste the addresses for your own needs. Okay, at the end of the address, I need to pass through the parts of the string address and postal code that I want to search. So I'm going to use an ampersand 
to concatenate or string together the field values. So I'll use a double click. And then I'm going to add a comma and a space. And I'm going to put that in uh, double quotes there. Usually you should use encodable characters and spaces don't encode it in a, in a web address. Um, I should use that percentage to zero. You might have seen that before. Except I've got spaces everywhere and you know in the in the address itself, and that's gonna make this demonstration too complex. So I'm gonna let the browser resolve the unencodable characters, which is pretty good at doing. Now, okay, I'm gonna concatenate the postal code. Uh, and that's it. I'll click OK. You can now see the web address here showing the hyperlink we need. Great. The only problem is when I view the data, calculated columns don't appear to the user because they're sort of done in the background. They, they don't need to provide an interface for the users to, to work or change the data. So that field disappears. Not a problem. We'll go and fix that now. So I'm going to do this by customizing this read-only form with Power Apps. Now this is not going to get scary or heavy with Power Apps. So I'm going to keep this light for viewers who are new to Power Apps. This will launch Power Apps in the browser. You may be asked to complete your login credentials and password. Once done, it will start to build a Power Apps form for you to customize. So you're presented with a form in the middle of the screen. Our fields are displayed as cards in the form and the fields panel makes it easier for me to select and manipulate these card objects. The properties panel here is where I'll modify the Bing URL field. I'll expand the Bing field, which is a calculated field that just displays the results as text. I can change the control type to other options. Sadly, the only hyperlink option is to view as an email hyperlink. This will force the link to open in my default email application, which I don't want. I want it to go into the browser. And that's, again, quite easily fixed. The card is currently locked, so I cannot change or manipulate the code uh, that makes this hyperlink actually work. If I click the card and in the properties, click the advanced tab, I can see the padlock button that unlocks the card. If I click the value object in the advanced tab, I can now change the HTML text property. Here you can see Power Apps has added uh, something called Mail To, and that's what sort of pushes. It's called a URI, and it pushes uh, all of this to my default email application. So this URI or this uni uniform resource identifier, I'm going to get rid of it. I'll remove the Mail To colon bit. There you go. So I'm going to just take that out. Moving along the code. There's a parent.default, and that's where it grabs the value from my field uh, and uses that as the actual hyperlink. But you see the parent.default again because it's using that same value to display to the user. So it's actually displaying the hyperlink as blue text. I'm going to remove this and replace it with the text Bing Map. Now I'll do this in a fashion that keeps the demonstration cleaner, but I would normally tidy up this code and make it uh, shorter. So here I am just going to replace parent.default with Bing Map. I'm going to put them between a pair of double quotes. That's it. All I need to do now is click the File tab at the top here. Save my Power App form design. That's going to make a new version of it away from the original. So in case there's a mistake, I can go back to that first version. OK, time to test the code. So now when I go into my customers list and click and view my customer item, my new form will load. And now 
I can see my Bing Map hyperlink. When I click the link, Bing Maps opens up and shows the customer's location on the map. I can also create a link to Google Maps if that's your preferred method um, or any web URL you prefer, providing you know the URL to make it happen. If I create the calculate column, uh, I'm going to create a new one to work with Google and I will place both links below the video, as I said, so you can copy them. If I open up Power Apps, I need to refresh the data um, in order to add uh, a new address or new field to the form. So I'm going to click the Data Sources button here on the left. Here is the Customers SharePoint app, and I'll click the ellipsis here and select Refresh. Now I'm going to go back to the tree view here on the left again, which will show my form and its objects. And if I click add field, I can now add the Google URL. And I'm just going to repeat the same steps as before to modify the hyperlink. form again. I've now got a Google Maps link as well. Super. Love it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope this trick is of use to you. I'm hoping to get back into more regular videos to offer, so please subscribe so that you can be informed of new releases. But if you like this video, this is where I need your help. I want to show videos that are of use to you. So please contact me here on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Tell me the kind of things you want to see. I'll look at all the comments as soon as I can and I'll consider all suggestions. Thanks again, stay safe and have fun.